Let's have a look at factorial notation next. Now, this is by far the most exciting topic in math. You've got exclamation marks everywhere. How can it not be exciting, right? Okay, so where factorial notation, so we're looking at a question similar to this. Six people must be arranged in a row. How many different ways can this be done? Now, do you notice where we had this? You've got five times four times three. Okay, this is where factorial notation comes in handy. So <clears throat> let's go back to this question. Sorry, I'm jumping around. If I have six people that must be arranged in a row, how many different ways can this be done? So these are the different spots, right? One, two, three, four, five, six different spots. And that's how we're arranging the people. There's six that can fit in here, five left, four left, three left, two left, and one left for that last spot. So we multiply all those numbers together, right? And we get 100, uh, sorry, 720. Now with factorial notation, you can very uh, quickly write all of this out with a six and an exclamation mark. So the exclamation mark is read as the word factorial. So seven factorial would be seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. So seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. So what does that equal? 5,040. Now, some of you may be wondering, oh, that's going to be a pain in the butt to enter into my calculator all the time, right? Okay. Now, someone has developed a nice little button, and oh boy, where could I find this button? Every calculator is going to have a little bit of a different kind of location to it. In this one here, I'm going to have to remember how to actually access it. What calculator do you guys have? You have the TI-83? This is the TI-85 from back in the day when I was in university. <coughs> so it's a bit retro for you. Someone have one that I can just steal? Oh, I got one over there. Okay, bear with me while I go find it. Okay. All right, so. So let's press the math button. And is it in here? Let's go. I probably should have figured this out before, hey? Yeah. I can't remember. Where is it? Hmm. Do to do to do. Do to do. Okay, I'm going to hit pause and I'm going to find it. Okay, I found it, and uh, we're, we're all kind of looking on it on our own calculators because our calculators are a little different. So what we're going to do is we're going to press, we're going to press math, if you've got the T83, and then you're going to go over to where it says probability right here, and then if you notice, it's number four, okay? Some of you might have to press the shift button to find it on your calculator, so don't look just at the, at the buttons. Look at like over here in the kind of like where, you know, above the numbers, it might be somewhere, somewhere there. Like see how you have to access 10 inverse using shift. All right, so there's our exclamation mark. That's our factorial. And the way I use it is I put the number in front of it that I want. So I have to go seven factorial, and then I hit enter, and I get 5040. So that's a much quicker way to figure it out. So four factorial, four factorial is 24. And 18 factorial, 18 factorial, whoops, wrong one.
uh, it's ginormous, right? Okay, so it's 6.40 uh, times 10 to the 15. All right, it's 18 times 17 times 16 times 15 all the way down to 1. All right, so now we're going to look at how to use it in a more general way and how we can actually use it when we're solving for something. Um, one thing you need to know, the definition of zero factorial is actually equal to one, okay? And this is a definition, it's not based on a proof. They needed some way to show, they needed like a, just think of it as a placeholder, okay? <clears throat> All right, now, so let's do a couple of these your turn questions and then I'm going to get you to try a couple of these on your own. So if I have 11 factorial over 9 factorial, basically we know that this is 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. I just wasted a whole bunch of time writing all of them out, right? What do you know about this here? Nine, what about this part right here? This is 9 factorial. So if I have 9 factorial down here, I can cancel this out with all of those. So this is 11 times 10, which is 110. Fun, hey? That's exciting. I think that's exciting stuff. Okay, now here, this n factorial. So n factorial is n times the previous number, which is n minus 1, times the previous number, which is n minus 2. I can keep going n minus 3, n minus 4, all the way down to 1, right? But what I have here is I can just write n minus 2 there, factorial, and then that's going to take care of those numbers in the denominator. So you see how we end up with similar factorials? You want to kind of expand it until you've got a similar factorial in the numerator, denominator, and then they cancel out. So this is now n times n minus 1, which is, you could leave it like that, or you could write n squared minus n. Okay? So have a look at these. I want you guys to try these questions, or um, you could hit pause and then come back, and then I'll, I'll show you the answers to these, okay? Sound good? Okay. Okay, so we're back. Uh, let's look at B. So B, you've got 5 factorial over 7 factorial. You can expand the 7 factorial so that it's 7 times 6 times 5 factorial. And then you have here these 5 factorials reduce, and then you end up with 1 over 7 times 6, which is? 1 over 42. And for D, if we look at D here, we can expand this n plus 1 factorial so that it's n plus 1 times the previous number, which is n factorial. And then we've got an n factorial here, so those two cancel, and we end up with, <coughs> excuse me, n plus 1. All right, now number two, it says prove. So notice here, whenever you're proving, remember from uh, when we were proving identities, we had left side, right hand side, so work independently on the left hand side, work independently on the right hand side, and go from there. So five times four times three factorial minus three factorial, 
Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to factor out this 3 factorial and it's going to be, I don't even really know if I need to do that. I can just solve it. I think I'm just having a little bit of fun here. So I end up with 3 factorial times 19, 20 minus 1. And I can figure this out, which is 6 times 19. And I think the reason why I did this in my head, what, why I was thinking this route, is what do you notice right here? And what do you notice right here? Whoa, those two are the same. So, oh, see, factorial, how exciting. Um, they are the same, okay, I know, I'm not funny. I know, I know, I'm sorry, I'm not funny. So that's 114, and this actually also works out to 114. Basically, we need to make a statement that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Okay? So, cool, no? Yeah, fun. Okay. Now, solving this guy, what are we solving it for? N. Solve for N. Okay, so let's, let's uh, expand this until we get... So n times n minus 1, n minus 2 factorial, and that cancels with this one down here, right? So the whole time that's equal to 30. Now I've got n times n minus 1 equals 30. Have that in brackets. <coughs> so basically I'm looking for two consecutive numbers that multiply and give me 30. So if I could figure it out that it's 6 and 5, I can say uh, that those are my options here, right? So it's going to have something to do with that. But let's, let's actually go through and solve it. n squared minus n minus 30 equals 0. Now let's factor this. So n minus 6 and then n plus 5. Now, it's a good idea that I actually went through and solved it and didn't just rely on my guess, right? Because what happens here? I get n is equal to positive 6 and n is equal to negative 5. Now, factorial is not defined for negative numbers, so I reject this. And then my solution is n equals 6. All right. Okay, now your life is more fulfilled and uh, has a lot more excitement in it. Okay, we're going to end this one and uh, the next video is going to be permutations. But